How many more dominoes like this do we expect to fall, John? It's a, it's a good question. I, I think the risk certainly is within decentralized borrow lending protocols. Uh, there's also likely some risk with foreign brokers operating in this space. Um, so this risk certainly seems like it's, it's just kind of beginning. Uh, what I would say is on the decentralized side, so a lot of the DeFi protocols, a lot of those positions are over collateralized. So you shouldn't quite see the underfunding situations that can happen with centralized borrower lenders. Um, but that being said, you could still see a lot of liquidations with that collateral being sold off on DeFi protocols. So that could lead to continued price declines, at least in the underlying crypto class. What about the bigger public companies like, like a Coinbase? How much risk is there for these companies given the extreme market conditions, which is something Celsius cited? Yeah, so Coinbase primarily um, is an exchange business right now. So there really isn't that borrow lend um, issues that you're starting to see in some of the other parts of the market. Um, on the you know on the exchange side, Coinbase seems to be still very solid. It's a, it's a quite a different business model uh, than the Celsius's of the world or these other borrow lenders, where you're offering really high yields uh, for assets to be deposited on those platforms. Uh, and it's you know you start to question where does that yield really come from? Come from? Coinbase isn't engaged in those type of businesses, so it's uh, it, it looks quite a bit different. But the, the real risk to Coinbase now is where is retail investor sentiment? Not only are there crypto concerns, there's also broader macro concerns. That's probably going to start weighing even more so on retail investor interest in the space. So that could, could lead to lower volume. So that, that, I think, is the primary risk of Coinbase is some of these trading volumes continuing to fall further. Do we know how much leverage uh, retail has been using in this area uh, and how much of a concern that should be? It's difficult to say. So. We, you used to be able to get 100 times leverage on international exchanges, so exchanges outside the U.S. Regulators brought that down some, so a lot of the platforms ended up going to 20 times. Still, that's quite a bit of leverage in the space. Um, and a lot of the times, also, not only just the exchange leverage you could take, but you could deposit assets in a number of different platforms to earn additional yield. So that's where you're starting to see a lot of the cracks is in these yield pools. And what users could do, whether retail or institutional, they could deposit one asset, collect a yield, stake another asset for another yield, get a derivative asset from that, stake that for another yield. So you're starting to see a lot of, that's where you're starting to see a lot of the concerns. Um, and so there is some inherent leverage in that aspect. But once again, from DeFi, most of the positions that you can take are over collateralized. So you really right. shouldn't have um, some of that leverage where you have an underfunded position. They are over collateralized. Understood. Um, uh, Kate mentioned Binance, the stuck transaction. Uh, do you have any idea what that means and what that will mean or, you know, if it's a concern? It, it's difficult. I think anything in this market right now can be certainly read as a concern. Um, you could have situations where a wallet, you're, you're having difficulty with uh, transactions coming into certain wallets. Um, so there could be some issues related there, but the longer it stretches, then it starts to become a bigger issue. John, do we have any updates on uh, the percentage of holders now who are underwater since their purchase? Uh, it's a good question. You can track that uh, on some of the, the blockchain applications out there. I haven't looked at that um, today. I would say at this point, you're starting to look at likely a decent amount. If you, I mean, just looking at the crypto asset prices, if you got in before October of 2021, there might be some positions you're still up on, but by and large, you're starting to be down quite a bit. Um, Bitcoin's actually held up pretty well, but Ethereum now is, is, is traded down quite a bit. And then if you look at a lot of DeFi tokens, those are down at 90% or so over the last year. So a lot of different areas within crypto assets, even if Bitcoin and Ethereum are holding up decently well, uh, some of the smaller market cap altcoins that have inherently more risk, those are already down quite a bit. And I would almost say have been in the bear market for six to, to nine months or so. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.